Coming up on a brand new episode of Theme Park Newsroom here on Coaster Chow, I'm going to be sharing some exciting new details on a public consultation for a new indoor attraction at the Alton Towers Resort. Is it a brand new attraction set aside away from the rumours of Secret Weapon 9? Well, I'm about to dive into all the details and what could yet to be revealed later on at the consultations. It's time for another Theme Park Newsroom here on Coast Chow YouTube channel. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I am the C-H-A-L-L Dogster Born Butt Built for Theme Parks and your Theme Park and Attractions Journalist. Today is another Theme Park Newsroom located at the Alton Towers Resort because over the last 24 to 48 hours we've got a huge breaking news update from Alton Towers as big stuff has been revealed on a public consultation taking place for a brand new indoor attraction now before we get started with all the details shout out to towers times credit goes to them for all of the images used in this video uh, and also all the information as well please do like comment subscribe click notification bell so never miss future video all the uh, uh, social media information is in the description down below and for now guys, let's have a look at exactly every single detail surrounding the new indoor attraction at the Alton Town Resort being planned for the public consultations in a couple of weeks. So over the last 24 to 48 hours, Alton Towers Resort are due to hold a public consultation event or exhibition event on Monday the 19th of September, so two, three weeks away, for emerging proposals to add a new indoor attraction on the former site of Alton Mouse in Coaster Corner. In leaflets distributed to local residents, the resort states that a new attraction in building is being proposed for the area to the west of the World of David Williams and the Alton Towers Dungeon. Only very, very limited information on the nature of the attraction is available at this stage, simply stated that it will be a new indoor attraction which will provide a new experience for visitors and will add to the existing attractions at the resort. It's anticipated that some further details on the attraction may be forthcoming at the public consultation events. These will take place at 1 till 3pm and 4.30 till 6.30pm on the 19th September in the Alton Towers Conference Centre, with several members of the project team in attendance to answer questions on the proposal. Proposals. Located in the most southwestern part of the theme park, this area, uh, this particular area, became known as Coaster Corner due to being home to three notable roller coasters: Four Man Bob, the Alton Mouse, and the Alton Beast for a number of years. However, the removal of Four Man Bob in 1990 marked the end of the start of the end for Coaster Corner. The area has not been accessible to theme park guests since 1992, when the Alton Mouse was removed and Alton Beast was relocated in the now known as Forbidden Valley. Valley as the new beast due to noise impacts on the nearby village of Alton from the rides in that coaster corner. Over a similar period, Adventureland 411 and its attractions were also disbanded, increasing the size of the area in this part of the theme park, no longer being utilised for attractions. Therefore, it seems as though the resort are looking to address the primary historic issue with using this location, being the wider noise impact of attractions situated here, by having the proposed new attraction be based indoors. Nowadays, the land is a backstage area used for storage and waste recycling facilities that's outlined what is broadly to be the perspective site in the following images. So, to the southeast is the Alton Towers Dungeon and to the north is the Merlin Ma Magic Making Studios North. Now, Staffordshire Moreland District Council's online interactive planning map is also helpful for identifying uh, where Alton Mouse once uh, were located and the Alton Beast as well, based on the outlines of their original planning applications as shown. It also highlights the site of Burnbury Hill Fort, a scheduled monument. This is a legally protected archaeological site, so it would be expected that the development would be designed to avoid encroaching into the area corresponding to this, marked in purple on the S. 
MDC's map, which you can already see on your screen from the start of this particular report. Although it is the former Alton Mouse site that is specifically referenced as being the location of the new attraction building, this is right to the west of the area, with a significant amount of space in between this and currently accessible areas of the theme park. It therefore seems likely that more of this area will be utilised as part of the wider development, perhaps for supporting rides and facilities such as food and retail outlets. For context on the scale of the entire potential development, Towers Times cut and pasted the smiler into the middle, showing the substantial size of the site. Depending on the layout, opening up this area may also provide guests with a closer look at the flag tower again, which is the westernmost feature on most maps and has been inaccessible for many years. Whilst people familiar with the situation have cited the location as that of the next secret weapon 9, which we have also talked about on this channel, it is not yet confirmed by the resort that this is the site for a secret weapon 9. There is also no guarantees that the proposed indoor attraction relates to the development of a roller coaster for Alton Towers. It is worth keeping in mind that beyond prior precedent, there is nothing to say the next secret weapon has to be a roller coaster. The development could instead be a large scale dart ride or some other attraction which isn't roller coaster based. All we knows that something new in the, is happening in the old coaster corner and that John Wardley referenced Secret Weapon 9 in the recent Towers Times 20th birthday celebration as well as states that the new roller coaster technology he's been most impressed by is coming along here. Now, of course, we are in the early days of this attraction announcement, and it's only possible to speculate about perspective themes. Now, with the attraction expected to be accessed from the area where Flavio's Fabulous Fandango currently resides, it raises the prospect of it being an expansion to the world of David Williams, which opened back in 2021. However, with such a large potential site for the development, it could easily stand its own right as a separately themed area. Another potential theme is Jumanji, because of course Gardaland and Chessington have been using that intellectual property. However, with the confirmation that it's going to Chessington in 2023, it's up for debate as to whether Merlin would want to have a Jumanji-based attraction at two of its UK resort theme parks, especially when Alton Towers is arguably less suited to feature in the intellectual property compared to Chessington. Of course, it could be a completely different IP or even an original concept, which all secret weapons to date have been. No time frame for the opening of the attraction has been given, although information said at the public consultation will be expected to give a better sense of this time scale. However, recent consultation events being held by other Merlin Resort theme parks could provide an approximate benchmark. Chessington held a public consultation for Project Genesis in May 2021, around two years prior to its planned Spring 2023 opening. While Thorpe Park held a public consultation for Project Exodus in December 2021, just over two years prior to its intended 2024 opening. Therefore, it seems like 2025 is targeted as the opening for the new indoor attraction, which would also mean that it doesn't clash with either of the other park's major investments. So it would be, I would say, the highlight of the 2025 season for Merlin at the minute. Now this would also fit around the other upcoming developments at Alton Towers, with Jewel expected to be rethemed for 2023 upon closing this month, and Nemesis track replacement potentially being completed for 2024. Now of course there is an area of excitement around this particular attraction and around all the rest of the developments going on at Alton Towers. So let's share a bit more information about what this means for the upcoming Coming new indoor ride at Alton Towers Resort. So just to give you an idea uh, of the size of the site, let's compare some existing indoor attractions for comparison. So, looking at the four dart rides, well, three if you count one of them being SBNO still, uh, at the park. So Alton Towers Dungeon is 2,951 square meters. Uh, Jewel, excluding the queue line, the garden queue line, and the gloomy wood area, is just over 3,000 square meters. Nemesis Subterra, excluding its queue line, is around 743 square meters, and Gangster Granny, excluding the outdoor queue line, is 881 square meters. Now, the whole combined area of this new site, if everything is uh, amalgamated together and things like trees in the middle aren't considered, uh, of course, not including the tree separating A411 and, uh, and CC, Coast Corner, in either measurement. It's around just over 7,000 square meters. Now, looking at other Merlin dart rides or areas, so Darren Brown's Ghost Train is 3,680 square meters. Flight of the Skyline at Legoland Windsor 
is uh, well, the skyline uh, sky lion alone is 869 square meters, and Lego Mythica is just over 4,600 square meters. Lego Ninjago alone is nearly 2,000 square meters, and the entirety of the Lego Ninjago world at Legoland Windsor is 2,843 square meters. Ghostbusters 5D, possibly excluding the queue line, is um, nearly halfway between 1,700 square meters and 1,800 square meters, nearly halfway between the two. Now, in terms of worldwide enclosed and indoor roller coasters, Walking Dead the Ride is just over 2,500 square meters. Van Helsing's Thatchery, Factory is nearly 4,000 square meters. Movie Park Studios Tour is nearly 6,000 square meters. R for the ride, as a rough measurement of the entire area, is just uh, is nearly 6,200 square meters, nearly. Star Wars Hyperspace Mountain at Disneyland Paris is just over 6,500 square meters. Revenge of the Mummy at Universal Studios Florida is um, 9,358 square meters, is a rough measurement. Rock and Roller Coaster at Hollywood Studios uh, is just over 11 and a half square, thousand square meters is a rough measurement. The dome alone for Space Mountain is just over 12,100 square meters. Vogel Rock is nearly 4,000 square meters, possibly excluding some Q-Line. Crazy Bats is nearly 6,000 square meters, and the Can Can Coaster is nearly 2,000 square meters. We're looking at a pretty good site here in terms of size. And look at some of the other worldwide dark rides. Curse of Dark Castle was um, nearly, uh, nearly 4,300 square meters nearly. Uh, Valhalla is nearly 3,500 square meters. Antarctica at SeaWorld Orlando is, you know, four, the ride building alone is, you know, just over 4,600 square meters. And the entire Antarctica realm is nearly 7,700 square meters, you know. And Hotel Transylvania at Motion Gate Dubai, including the facade, is nearly 3,700 square meters. We are looking at a pretty big area to play with, which makes me suggest it might not even be just. Um, a you know an attraction an indoor attraction we could be looking at more than that we could be looking at a brand new area as a sort of sub area sort of between the dungeon and the David Williams section now let's share some potential rumors about themes and identities and facades for the ride coming up to the public consultations in a couple of weeks so let's begin discussing themes. Now, of course, this isn't confirmed to be Secret Weapon 9. However, I really wouldn't rule it out. I know 2025 is not too long after the Nemesis reopening. So a new coaster, whether it's indoors or not, right next to, you know, the year after Nemesis reopening. You know, I mean, to be fair, it would be a consistent way to keep bringing the crowds back. But let's be brutally honest here. It would be very, very tough to open a Secret Weapon project straight after a Nemesis refurbishment. And two years after you've just rethemed an overhauled jewel into the, what I suspect to be the returning haunted house in a brand new way. So, you know, we're not going to rule out Secret Weapon 9 as a possibility, but as a coaster, it would be a very, very 50 50 chance at this point. But to be fair, you know, to, to sort of lend a hand to the fact that it may not be a roller coaster. It is just talking about this Alton Mouse section. It is just talking about this Coast Corner section being the site of the attraction. They didn't say anything about... I mean, we may hear more at the public consultation, so it may not be ruled out completely. But I did not hear a lot about a queue line running from the Enterprise site to the site. It's not completely ruled out. They may, We may see that in the consultation in a couple of weeks, but I wouldn't completely rule it out. I wouldn't personally completely rule it out. So... For me personally, I feel like this could be Secret Weapon 9. This could be an indoor roller coaster. F few fans mentioned it maybe, maybe something, maybe could be a similar type of ride to the the new Dark Coaster type attraction coming to Busch Gardens Williamsburg next year, where it's like a very weird looking indoor coaster with some real dark ride elements. So again, there's a real possibility of that. SW9 doesn't have to be a coaster, it can be a, a dark ride, as Towers Times mentioned on their articles. So for me, I feel like there's a real good chance of that. Um, for me personally, in terms of themes, I think we, we shouldn't be ruling out World Debbie Williams. I think we really should be ruling that out. Um, I mean, there's, there's some good books to choose from that you could still go for. Um, you've got to think of the dungeon next door as well. Could they expand on the dungeon uh, and create that sort of courtyard section, if you will? Um, or maybe like a dockyard section where you've got the dungeon and the new attraction. That could be a possibility. 
You could long term expand Dark Forest into that particular section and have the dungeon and obviously, you know, Hex, the whole of Fountain Square, uh, maybe the driving school rethemed into like a Dark Forest theme as well. Like, have like a second entrance to Dark Forest and then have the new attraction, the new indoor attraction themed around Dark Forest and like expanding on the crypt and the story. So you could have that as an example. Um, or you could just retheme the entirety of Fountain Square and have the dungeon redone and the new attraction. I mean, there, there's, there's a complete... You can't rule anything out at this stage. So there's a million and one different possibilities in terms of themes. You could go down the David Williams route. You could go down Dark Forest or the Dockyard kind of route or the dungeon theme. You could go down a completely different theme. Like I said, this might not be just an indoor attraction. This could be a couple of surrounding attractions in a brand new mini area. I'm not going to say Jumanji, I think that's out of the question, I know Tower's Time's brought the possibility of that, but as they said, with Chessington confirming it, with Gardaland getting it, I do not see it coming to Alton Tower, so I wouldn't worry, you know, if you're worried about Jumanji coming in, I don't think that'll be the case at this stage, uh, plus I think it would really clash with, the, with David Williams and the dungeon nearby, so it'd be a real clash of themes and it really wouldn't flow together really well in terms of the areas surrounding this particular section of the park so i think it'd be a really bad decision to go with jermaine's like i said it'd be a real clash of themes and it wouldn't feel flowing or transition or, or easily transitionable as other themes would be so family horror could be a direction to go down for me it's between world devil williams and family horror i think that's the kind of two themes i'm going with i per unless it's david williams though i don't think they're going to down an ip I really don't think they're going to go down an IP route here. I think they're going to go down something original, like other secret weapon projects, like other attractions have been in the past that are non-secret weapon projects. So, for me personally, I think they'll go down an original route or they'll go down the World Dev Williams route and expand on that. And to be fair with the Coast Corner section, it does make sense because you can use the old Ice Age 4D theatre building as like an entrance way kind of thing. Uh, that could be the potential entrance to this ride. This could be the potential ex You could actually build the building and have it join on to the old theatre building and literally you could build in that old Twilling Toastal spot and use the old Ice Age 4D as an entrance way for the attraction. You really wouldn't rule it out, would you? I mean, that's a real possibility here that we could be looking at. If this happened and it is a World Dead Worms attraction and it's not a secret weapon, that would rule out that whole enterprise to coast to corner section as a site for Secret Weapon 9. Um, like I say, if it's not a secret weapon that and it's in that site, that would rule out that site as Secret Weapon 9. So, of course, from, from an SW9 point of view, you'd be looking at Galactica's car park, Subterra to the Ripsaw site, you know, with possibilities. Um, I know there was talk years ago of maybe a secret weapon project to the north of Nemesis. Whether that's a possibility or not, it's like a phase two of the redevelopment of Forbidden Valley with the Nemesis refurbishment, and then phase two being maybe Secret Weapon 9 in that area. Because remember a few years ago when they cut loads of trees down around Nemesis Subterra in Forbidden Valley, we all thought there was a possible development coming from Forbidden Valley there. Um, so maybe it is maybe a case of Secret Weapon 9 goes into Forbidden Valley, it's like a phase two of the, the Nemesis refurbishment story. So that could be an alternative possibility if we're looking at a non-secret weapon project in a site which we thought would be secret weapon 9. So again it's going to be very very interesting to see how this develops. Obviously though, over the next couple of weeks we'll get more information, we'll find out more. I really want to be at public consultation but I, I, it depends because I'm it depends because I might have some other things going on on that Monday. If there's nothing going on on that Monday on the 19th of September because I get paid by work on like the week before. So on the Monday, hopefully, fingers crossed, I do want to head down there to check out the public consultation, ask some questions, take some notes, uh, proper theme park journalism, that kind of thing. And it'd be great to head down to Alton Towers on the 19th, uh, on the conference centre on the 19th to check out the public consultation, sh you know, report every single thing I know, share all I know, share all I can reveal and share my thoughts on it but hopefully i can send a couple of weeks whether i'm there or not on the 19th we'll get some more information on the brand new investment that looks to be coming to the park in the next few years so thank you very much guys for watching this video make sure you do like comment subscribe and for now i am the chall dogster born but built for theme parks and your theme park journalist worldwide keep living the ro uh, coaster life i said rover's life why did i say that coaster life and that my friends is the end of the video thank you very much have a wonderful, towers-tastic day.